of that, we're going to force you into a specific path, into a specific folder on the application. So very granular. And then even within that, you can say such things as, oh, well, you know what? You're only allowed to see uh, Excel spreadsheets. And that's it. Or the Word documents you see are only read only. You can't take anything with you. You can't take it with you. I think that's a, that's a play or a musical. Hello. Again, apologies for this uh, delay. So while we have a break, any other questions? So uh, what do you mean by dynamic? Running through, running through like forests, running through domain trust, running through AD, then radius, then LDAP? until you log in. It certainly could. Yeah. So we're not, so in this, in, in this particular scenario, uh, we're not necessarily keeping any user information local. It, we're making a query also. Yeah. Uh, not in this specific revision of it. Uh, at some point, we fully expect it. And including such things as pushing down group policy. You know, that type of, of pieces you can also, you know, sort of incorporate. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's see, layer access control entries. Oh, well, I don't have any. Dun, dun. I wish I had another scene to show you. Uh, I could. Well, anyway. I love these dead times. Hey, look, 21 seconds. He didn't do, he didn't say anything. Okay, so anyway, so that's the uh, access control piece. You can see, you know, source and, and the mass, your ports, destinations, destination ports, what types of protocols, uh, the action to take, whether or not you want to log it. So, of course, reporting and logging is important. So that would be all your access control piece. After that, you want to set up, you know, your remote users or your secure access folks. And so you create your, you know, pools of addresses that you're going to dole out or you incorporate, you know, DHCP into it and push that out. Um, you create your little groups of users and, and, and then potentially resources uh, that are available to them. And again, we go back to that, to that top piece. So this, this could be set up for, you know, your internal users. Um, and then if you want to then add your remote folks to that, they would then abide by these particular policies. And so how that's all done. Let me, let me make my own little thing. It takes too long. Okay, let's move on to this while it's doing its uh, little doodah. So best practices. What would you want? Well, how do you want to uh, set up yours? Does anybody deploy NAC today in here? Wow, it's pretty popular, isn't it? <laughs> what are some of the types of things that you guys do for, are, are, are you guys ma managing your systems or not? Or you're just sort of here to kind of get some more information and, and learn about it? <laughs> That's good stuff. All right, so protect your critical assets. Your data, your end users. Make it very simple. You know, create these pictures, these graphs, so that uh, everybody within 
your organization can create policies, can use them. Uh, making sure that you determine if this one policy abides by, uh, abides, applies to all of your systems or it's dependent upon the type of user that's coming in. Make sure that it's simple and obviously keep the administrator. Let me go back to this guy. Ooh, wow, it worked. So here, how it, you know, how it would all kind of um, come together is you create this virtual server or virtual instance of your application, or this potentially could be, you know, a URI for outsiders or uh, a set of virtual servers um, in your internal, you know, application or back-end systems, like a lot of load balancers do. You VIP the front end and, you know, you splash your servers in the back and this makes intelligent decisions on who to go to. And then within that, It's on high speed twine, you know, from the couple of can, the can over in the, uh, in the top of the room, and there's a big old can on my end. I just uh, didn't wax the twine enough to make sure that it goes. HST, high speed twine. That'll be the newest thing. So I built my uh, virtual server, et cetera, et cetera, and then here's my access profile, you know, that pretty little diagram that I built. And I'm going to apply this access profile to this particular virtual instance. You know, virtualization is another, um, you know, fun word in uh, the industry today. Oh, virtual OS, virtual networking, virtual storage, uh, virtual applications. And so you build all, you know, your virtual pieces, depending on what's necessary on the back end, and then, you know, apply it to your users. And I purposely, actually, I went a little faster than normal, though a little faster than I uh, had, um, probably like five minutes faster, because I thought I'd leave, you know, 10 or 15 minutes for questions or discussion, like most of uh, the sessions do. So are there any? Yes. So, are there, so do you mean questions of vendors or questions of yourself? What's your security policy state? What are, what are, what sort of laws do you need to abide by? Um, you know, who's going to get in trouble if some systems, you know, get breached? You know, a lot, it's, it's very different for, you know, very different companies. You can, you can start by, you know, potentially, you know, building this little chart, right? And, you know, the chart would have um, type of user, you know, remote, internal, whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, you could then choose uh, are they trusted or not trusted, you know, because people can be a remote user but have a trusted device, you know, or they could be coming from their home machine. Uh, you would then maybe add another table that has such things as allow downloads, are they allowed to install applications or controls under their system? Now, most home users potentially have administrative rights, you know, on their systems, but not all, you know, the remote users. Particularly, you don't know if, you know, the partner laptop that needs to get in, you know, what sort of rights and or OS and, you know, other, other such things that are running on, on the system, on the device to get in. Um, you know, then, then again, what type of access do they need? Are they going to give them layer three access? Are you going to give them a, you know, a direct network connection? Or are you just going to give them, you know, are you going to proxy a web application? You know, some sort of protection. You know, are you going to, you know, send them directly to the web app? Or are they going to have to go through a web application firewall so that they don't SQL inject, so that they don't forceful browse, so that they don't do all these nasty things on the inside? 